Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Rupan the Third, Part Four, Episode Number Thirteen and Fourteen Reaction. Okay, the previous episode we got a lot of uh, new developments. Um, we got to know uh, about Rebecca's past, about the dream of Italy, and uh, a lot of other things as well. The first thing that happened is Rebecca was like you know trying to find like decipher like a little uh puzzle that was kept uh, left for her by uh i forgot the guy's name the scientist guy and uh, she ends up not being like gets she ends up being captured and rupan by the end of it uh ends up helping her out busting her out of the confinement and here rupan gets to know that yeah like you know there's like a, some kind of a puzzle in the in the book that was uh written by the scientist guy and Rebecca has been trying to decipher it uh, from the day of his death to, to understand why he died. Now, the next episode, we get more deeper into it where Rupan actually tries to decipher it. And we get to know by the end of it that it was actually like the dream of Italy, I'm guessing. It's actually uh, something that uh, the scientist guy made. It's basically like a, um, putting his consciousness or his... Uh, himself in someone else's dream or someone else's like you know mind and uh, it gets triggered by like you know one word which rupan read before he went to sleep and he started dreaming and um, you know like the the guy ended up he ended up not he but the guy ended up being in his dream and uh, both uh, him and uh, rebecca so from here rupan con uh, like you know kind of talks with him and gets to know everything and understands that uh like the mi6 is like you know actually killed him and uh, made it seem as if it was a suicide and uh, a few other stuff and he asked him to burn all the books burn everything that's related to that so that it doesn't fall in the wrong hands and uh, yeah lupan goes to do that and takes rebecca like you know tells her that she has deciphered it all that nix comes and starts chasing them you know he burns the house down where uh, the secret compartment was there all the books and everything and uh, rupan and rebecca tries to run away rebecca like rupan lets rebecca run away then rupan gets shot and uh, obviously like you know nix also gets shot because he has went berserk and uh, they get captured then rupan is actually bailed out by zenigata <laughs> oh boy and uh, yeah that's how it ended now from here we all we could understand is uh, the dream of italy is obviously something that the mi6 is using to experiment and everything and my guess would be nix is one of the experimental subjects that's why he has oh another thing we got to know nix has like uh, the properties of like animals he has like you know rat ability and a few other abilities as well which i think they did not actually tell us directly for example maybe a bat's ability and the calculation ability the, he has all those stuff so yeah i'm guessing that's like a side effect not a side effect but like a result for the experimentation and that's why they don't want nix's ability to for the world to know about it all that stuff i'm sure i'll get my answers uh, as we watch more so yeah let us begin this is episode number 13 so uh, yeah i'll be putting the subtitles on the timer here sing it whichever is your preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three two one go oh. <laughs> Yo, Monolith is blinking. <laughs> okay, so I mean, this is the next part of. Whoa. Wait, is that Rupan? <laughs> oh, he has been. Wait, why is he here? He had been arrested by Zenigata, so. Maybe Zenigata is keeping him here because you know, like he usually breaks out of every prison. So Zenigata is like, ah, let me put him in <laughs> this abandoned island in a like you know locker thing or something <laughs> with metal doors and all, so that he never runs away. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so yeah, this is the beginning of the second part of this season. 
All right. <clears throat> okay, let us see how Rupan breaks out of his prison cell. Oh, no subtitles? Okay. No, wait. Oh, that's... Rupan arrested. <laughs> He's like, I don't believe it. <laughs> oh, that, okay. Hundreds of gods. Also, Zenigata told the chief to go to that. Ah. Ah. Okay, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That's also... No one knows. Ah! Oh my god. Yo, Zenigata! He's just... <laughs> a walking Rupan encyclopedia. Wait, how did he... Did no one see? How was he doing that? <laughs> oh my god, I feel like Zenigata will be waiting there. Yeah! <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh god. Oh my god, he really did that I think after that. You know the the, the first scene, abandoned island, all steel. Oh my god. He's like, yeah, this is what he wanted. Here you go. <laughs> I don't think so. Yes. <laughs> you know nothing. <laughs> oh my god. Wow, Zenigata is actually completely just... Well, he's going to knock you out now. Like, that's what he's going to... You fool. Are you an idiot? What is this guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but obviously. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's having his doubts now. Then he was like, no, wait, maybe. <laughs> Yo, that's that, the first season. Oh my god. Yo, this is. <laughs> this is from the first season. My god. Well, that's Rupan, obviously, in disguise. <laughs> yes, you played the same trick before.
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this guy. <clears throat> Wait, like if they yeah, take away all the guards and make like an abandoned place. Oh, he's going to look over him. <laughs> Whoa. I was going to say how he's going to get his food. <coughs> like someone needs to bring food to him. That's why. Okay, is any others going to do that, I'm guessing. Yo. But he has tricked, yeah, tricked you multiple times as well, Zenigata. All right, let's see what <laughs> he's making food. <laughs> oh my God, this is. Ah, <laughs> oh. yeah, it looks good. Yeah. <laughs> Probably we will. Oh yeah, Fujiko Goemon Zenigata. Oh no. Wow, they are keeping in information on them. Okay, okay. <laughs> Goemon knows that he's being watched. Well, everyone knows they're being watched. <laughs> oh my god. Well, Zenigata. This is... Why is he looking... The food that he gets in prison, what... <laughs> Wait, what's happening? Oh my god! Oh my god, this guy. Yep, that's definitely a trick. Oh boy. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> so wait, he is he really not eating? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Yeah, it's just going to keep it. Oh boy. Uh, is this really a trick? I don't Oh my god. <laughs> he's like, I... <laughs> so he's just realizing that he likes Upan when he's running around and he's trying to chase him. He likes that. <laughs> More than him just being... 
<laughs> captured and confined. Oh my god. <laughs> this guy. Oh. Oh my god. Yeah, he prefers that. He prefers Rupan running away and him just trying to catch him. I still can don't un understand. Is this really a part of plan? What the? I was like, who is that? These wait, wait. These these art styles are really interesting. <laughs> like they say, the journey is important, not the destination. Uh, well, <clears throat> hmm. <laughs> he's like, well, I have to save Ruban then. Oh my God, this guy, he's whacking his head in these rocks every day. Oh my God. Uh, that is what I was told. Oh, they told him like, don't move unless and until we tell anything. So yeah, these are part of this is obviously a part of the plan. Like, You know what? I really doubt that he's not eating. I feel like he's eating. But then how is he able to keep the food? Or maybe he's really not eating. Oh my god. Ah, uh, there you go. That's what I've been saying. That's yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, he said that. <laughs> Stick to your heart. Uh. <clears> hmm. <throat> <clears throat> What is happening? Wait, what? 
It's summer. Uh. I'm pretty sure he's going to escape, but then how was he able to do this? That's my question here. Like he has not really not been eating for a long time. Oh no! Oh no! Ah! Wait, wait! What? Where? Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, so he really has not been eating? How wow. <laughs> he did all of this to get away from there. Yeah. That's true. So that's why he has been waiting in front of the thing so that she cannot Ah, so that's why he's been sitting in front of the thing so that she, he cannot see the picture. Whoa. Yeah, true. <laughs> oh, when he saw that, <laughs> wow, <coughs> yeah, true, he was on eating. Oh, my God. <laughs> True. That's the good that's come out of this, you know? Well, you have food. I guess all, all of this food are just rotten now, but yeah. <laughs> it's like, yes, I have my... I, <laughs> Rupan is not dead, thank God. Yo! <laughs> oh god, Nyx, Nyx is like, not again. <laughs> okay, so Nyx is fine. Uh, like, I you know he was captured and all, but... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Wait, is he talking about Nyx? For a moment I thought it was Rupan. No, it was not Rupan, it was Nyx. 
No, wait, who the hell is this? What? Oh my god, they have more secrets that we didn't realize. I thought, uh, who is that random guy? Oh my god. Okay, so he said something like if he adapts. So that was another one of the secrets that he... How many secrets does this organization have? Like, the first thing was obviously the whole Nixa situation. The whole dream of Italy now this? Who the hell is this guy? I'm guessing, he, is he like one of the experimental subjects? I'm guessing. That's probably it, yeah. Okay, that's it. Wow. <laughs> God damn, this episode. <laughs> All right, we begin with um, Rupan being arrested and Rupan is behind bars. So, oh my God. So the plan he has been hatching from before he was in the prison, he, when he looked at the mountain, he was like, ah, oh, this looks like art. So he came up with a plan, I'm guessing from then onwards, wow so he has been actually doing this mini escape things attempts just so that zenigata can transfer him to an abandoned island with only steel a steel compartment with zenigata being only there the, everything was part of the plan because he probably realized that he won't be able to get out that easily this time so he went in this uh, weirdly uh, complicated way to get out all right so <laughs> oh my god so yeah it's really interesting if you think about it because uh here in in the in the actual prison if rupan stayed there it would have been a lot of more problematic to get out because obviously the security is there but even if he's able to get out zenigata is there and zenigata can easily capture him and uh, the security with obviously is going to help him out so to take down all the security and everything only him and zenigata will be left to make a situation like that he did this because dealing with zenigata is difficult but i doubt it's more difficult than dealing with like hundreds and thousands of police officers just patrolling the ground and trying to catch you you know so yeah he, he opted for zenigata who is a lot more capable than the other police officers but he's still one person you know so yeah, that's what he did, which I guess paid off by the end. He, he made the correct decision. Okay, so <clears throat> in the actual prison, obviously the chief, the police chief here, he's like, ah, what can Rupan himself do? You know, like this is like one of the best <laughs> prisons. And Zenigata is like, you don't know any time now. And the alarm starts ringing and <laughs> I love how, like, you know, each and every time the chief was like, okay, now at least it'll be fine. But then again, something else happens. And uh, that um, reference from season one was hilarious. The whole priest thing where he, <laughs> a priest comes in and he takes the disguise of a priest and tries to get out. Obviously, that was from, I think that, that I think that was from season one, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that was definitely from season one. So <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> and Zenigata is like, and I think Rupan actually, I was thinking, why did Rupan use the same trick again? He, he used this trick before on Zenigata. Rupan is not that type of a uh, person who plays this, like, you know, type of a easy game. I'm sure he would realize that he should not use the same trick twice on the same person. So he deliberately uses, used it just so that Zenigata is able to take him to a place where he would never be able to get a disguise. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah, that's why he played the same trick. He, he, was, he was actually um, uh, ready to be found out. And he knew he was going to be captured again. But that was also part of the plan. So, <laughs> okay. 
Now, by the end of it, the, the police chief was like, oh my God, what now? Like, what do you want? Like, at first he was very much like, oh, like, nah, no, like, you know, need. He, he'll be fine here. You know, like, what, what do you even, uh, what else do you need from here? You know, like, um, I don't, like, you know, support your plan. He was talking to Zenigata. Uh, about like you know taking him to like an abandoned place where there'll be no one but by the end of it he's like all right do whatever you want to i cannot deal with this person anymore <laughs> so yeah zenigata got the full um cooperation of the italian police and he brought rupan into <laughs> i love the way he transported him <laughs> in a boat with full-on chains you know like locked rupan in completely uh, and you know what one thing i appreciate he was a actually giving good food to rupan like he was actually giving variety of food like you know, each and every day was like a new dish and i'm like <laughs> which prison does this <laughs> obviously it's zenigata that's why you know like this was happening like i was i was really <laughs> i was very much impressed by zenigata's um devotion in actually cooking good food for rupan <laughs> Each and every day, there's a variation. He's not doing the same thing over and over again. One day it's curry, the next day it's pasta, the next day it's something else. <laughs> Just... <laughs> I don't know why, but that amused me so much. <laughs> Anyways, um, so not only that, he also started keeping eyes on all the crew members, plus Rebecca as well. Um, you know, like... Everyone was doing their own thing. Goemon was just under the waterfall. Uh, Jigen was just in like a casino. Fujiko, you know, just doing Fujiko. <laughs> the stuff she does, just hanging around like uh, like an expensive hotel or something. And everyone was just keeping an eye on them. And everyone knew that they're keep being watched, obviously. Like Goemon knew, Fujiko knew. I'm sure Jigen also knew. And Rebecca was also being kept on watch. And... Uh, Okay, so I'm guessing the thing that uh, later on Rebecca says that shouldn't we do something? He tells, asks Rob, like, shouldn't we do something about this? And Rob was like, no, like, you know, I, it, it's like, you know, I, I was told not to go help him out by his crewmates. So we are supposed to keep quiet and do nothing at this point. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure um, the first thing Lupin's crew, like Jing and all of them did is like they went, probably told Bob, uh, Rob, that even if you, you know, it seems like Rupan is going to die, don't do anything. I'm sure he has a plan, you know, just keep believing in him and just sit still. We'll also do the same because, yeah, like, you know, they knew what Rupan is going to do at what, you know, instance, because they've been with Rupan for so long. So that's why Rob was like, no, like, you know, like, don't, you know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. They told me not to do anything. And if they tried to do anything, it would have been made the, made the more situation more complicated. Like, you know, Rupan needed to make Zenigata re think that he's dying. So, yeah. And needed to make Zenigata think that no one's going to try to help him out. And he's the only one that can do something about this situation. That was important. So, the whole plan, I, I was, look, obviously, I, was, I knew that he, he was planning something. The one thing I was really confused about is, is he really not eating food? Because you need food to keep yourself you know, healthy and everything. But his, like, you know, his uh, sunken ma face is, like, you know, like, fading color from his face. And his weak, you know, like, weak, it was, it was clearly, like, you can see that he was being weak day by day. So I was like, what's happening? He has not been eating for so long. So is he like, you know, like, is this also like a part of the trick that he's playing? But making yourself feel sick, like, you know, look sick and like that is kind of impossible unless and until you have some kind of a disguise or something. So I was like, and, and also the food was there as well. So I was like, he's not eating. So how, like, what does he plan on doing even after this? And... <laughs> as it went on and on i was like how is he going to actually escape like you know i i was also really confused i was like what's going to happen after this so obviously zenigata is also was on the same boat he's like what's happening why is no one coming to save him you know like why is like you know this happening why is he not eating like you know what am i supposed to do i thought rupan like you know just capturing rupan and him being like in a prison cell and he's going to die that is my 
main goal of my life but now i can see that probably not that was not my goal and he <laughs> he actually realized little by realizes little by little that what he loved about this is the you could say the competition the i would say the thrill as well of trying to capture rupan like you know over and over again getting him and like you know failing him breaking out again repeating the process that's what he enjoyed about this whole thing and rupan dying is going to take that away from him he like he said like you know when rupan said that you're going to get someone eventually like me as well but that's a big if and obviously zenigata is also getting old so someday like you know like he's also going to die so there's no guarantee that someone else like rupan is going to come you know who's going to give him the same uh challenge that rupan once gave him and uh, you know like and honestly speaking i don't think that's also like you know part of the problem here zenigata was probably just attached to rupan at this point you know <laughs> so that is basically I, i'm guessing like even if someone else who gave the same amount of competition to zenigata came that person would never be able to replace rupan you know in zenigata's head so that was also part of the thing here so yeah like he he's actually realizing what's the problem here and zenigata is like you know it's actually dawning on him you know this is the situation and <laughs> and oh my god so all of that part of the plan and obviously he cannot do anything here like he knows like it's like a conflicting situation he knows his main goal is to capture rupan his police officer he cannot just let him go you know so that's why he was like fujiko goemon zenigata anyone come and save save him <laughs> i cannot do anything here at this point and like all of this was happening and i'm like how is he going to get out what is the plan here you know like how can he even get out in this situation and uh, <laughs> you know like <clears throat> So in the end Rupan is like and I love the fact that at, at the beginning he was just sitting here and there and then as time goes on and on he starts sitting actually really close <laughs> to the um uh the the, the thing the, the flat thing where Zenigata used to put the food in he he used to sit he started to sit close to that which I did not understand I, I didn't even notice at the beginning it, it didn't it wasn't even suspicious at that point but later on i realized why he was doing that because his picture was there <laughs> god so yeah and in the end rupan was like you know like you know i this is my final wish uh, i need i need a cigarette and a razor i, I at least want to look presentable now I don't remember correctly but I feel like this thing also happened in season 1 in the same episode I think the prison episode you know where the priest came and all that correct me if i'm wrong in that episode as well he asked for a cigarette and a razor didn't he if i am actually remember it correctly like i said i'm not quite sure I, my memory is kind of failing me here but i think he in that episode as well he he asked for the same two things cigarette and razor and i think he was provided the cigarette just like he, in, in this episode and he was not provided the razor like zenigata said the same thing you can use it as a weapon so i'm not going to give that to you like the same thing happened there as well didn't it or am i actually like you know kind of mistaken anyways um but i i feel like this the same scene happened there and zenigata answered it the same way he did in this episode as well He gave him the cigarette, and he did not provide him with the razor because he could use it. I think so, at least. I'm, I'm, I can't remember. Anyways, um, so yeah, he just sits there, and uh, <clears throat> here, Zenigata asks him, like, why did you actually give up all your life for one person, for one girl? And like Rupan said, you know, in in the uh, in the in the police car, it was like, like I got that one thing. That, like I, I stole that one thing. Where is it? Where is that part? Then it's it's love. Okay, here we go. What is it? Is she worth ending it all for? <clears throat> the answer is obvious. It's for love. And then he looks at the mountain. It's like a picture. 
and that's obviously when the plan struck he's like that's probably when like he explains he decided to draw a masterpiece and get out of the prison oh god and uh, yeah Lupin is like it's okay like you know like you did your job you stuck stuck to your art you know box i stuck to my art and yeah and then he falls down you know and i'm guessing after that he probably just, just went to one of the corners and just sat down <laughs> just so that zenigata could see that you know like thing. now one thing i was really curious about is that like you know the the flies you know one of the fly was on his nose when he was dead and obviously at that moment i did not know that was a picture i was like well the flies are hovering around him is he really like you know dying or something what's happening and then i realized by the end it was just a part of the picture <laughs> obviously the flies were there for the food you know and uh, but that fly was a part of the picture okay anyways um so yeah that happened and for a moment i mean you know when the snow melted and everything i was like what happened like you know is it like summertime or something like is rupan in, th in there for like for one or two weeks but then i realized no it, it's just like you know the snow stopped and it, it started sh the sun just started shining and like zenigata said obviously they cannot keep a dead body in a prison they need to bring it out so and zenigata was convinced at that moment that rupan is dead so yeah zenigata goes there opens the um the the door and i was like yep something is going to happen but i'm confused what is going to happen like you know like what can rupan do at this point and there you go he gets in and for a moment i was like wait a minute rupan is lying there is kind of expanding i'm like what's happening is is there any hallucinating or something <laughs> i was like did he, you know did he eat something bad or something happened like what happened like why is he like you know the picture getting like you know the thing getting bigger and then i was like oh, okay it's a picture <laughs> it's it's a painting oh my god and yeah obviously rupan was just waiting there and zenigata was probably just too focused on the picture to realize that the key card and all like was taken from him and uh, yeah the, the gun as well and here zenigata realizes all and everything was part of rupan's plan you know he has been actually leading him in this you know all the different like you know changing the different <laughs> prisons and all just so that he and zenigata could be alone here just so that he could break out of this so <clears throat> yeah and <laughs> zupan is like this is italy so yeah obviously like i thought why not make a masterpiece um <laughs> he's like probably the art would have fetched a lot more price if i died <laughs> so yeah but that's unfortunate that won't happen but <laughs> and he just goes <laughs> gets out and locks zenigata in there and later on zenigata was like you know uh take uh you know saved from there i'm pretty sure zenigata was making uh, like just regular calls to the headquarters giving them the you know like the updates and all so i'm guessing after you got captured like you know in the prison the updates stopped and probably the police officers got concerned and got here and saw this <laughs> that's how he was able to get out because for a moment there i was like how is he going to get out of here like you know like he's in an abandoned island who's going to know but then i realized he's probably he was probably making like regular uh, updates to the headquarters and that's how he was able to not regular but maybe weekly because but when he was taken out of that prison cell he looked very like you know like you know famished so if it was daily updates he would have probably been busted like you know taken out of the prison in one day and he wouldn't look like that so it was probably weekly updates you know every week he probably like made an update like oh everything is fine here rupan is okay this and that and since that stopped after a week he was rescued and he had no food there you know like the, there were food there but those were rotten food like what can they do well what can he, if he eats that he's going to like you know his stomach is going to be yeah but i feel like you know like if if it actually went to a situation where like, you know he's like there for one or like you know like two weeks probably a month without food he would have probably eaten that because hunger is something that is yeah just 
okay anyways that's like a different thing uh, so yeah rupan is out <laughs> and i love how in the end when zenigata realized that rupan is actually busting out of the prison he's laughing he's like yes finally <laughs> the adventure the chase will continue <laughs> oh. And yeah, everyone got to see the news. And Nix is there. Nix is like, my God, the guy. He went. He he broke out. <laughs> and Zenigata, Goemon, uh, Fujiko, Rebecca, everyone's there. And um, yeah, the, the crew is back, I guess. And th then after that, we get the little section with the the, the the MI6 chief. Him saying something like, "Oh, this is bad. He's out." You know. If he adapts to the world. Now, here is where I kind of got confused for a moment. I was like, wait, he is he talking about Rupan? And then I was like, oh, no, maybe he's talking about Nyx. And then this random dude shows up naked in front of the... I'm like, what? Who's this? <laughs> uh, okay, this guy says... So this is Rome. Like... So... And a test subject, experimental subject, I'm guessing, because the police chief said something like, if he adapts to this world, it'll be bad. I'm guessing it's something like that. So, yeah. Wow, that was, that was a great episode. <laughs> the whole uh, situation of... <laughs> Again, realizing that without Rupan, his life would not be complete. <laughs> the realization hits again in this episode <laughs> and he realizes that yeah like, like i said like you know the destination is important obviously but at the same time what's important is the journey that you make that's that's definitely the case with zenigata yes he enjoys the journey if he reaches the destination it's that's just it you know like he it'll be over so he he just wants to kind of be in the journey for more for longer and kind of enjoy that so. <laughs> all right that was episode 13 let's begin with the next one episode number 14 let us begin i'll be putting the subtitles on the timer right here sync it to whichever is a preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three two one go <laughs> Paris, the museum. Oh, we're in the museum. <clears throat> so, Ruban. Wait, is he actually planning on stealing something? Oh, wait, it's that guy. Wait, who's this? Leonardo da Vinci? Hmm. Okay, what's happening here? <laughs> yeah. Stealing some painting or something? Uh, oh my god she he's planning to <laughs> he's planning to steal the mona lisa what <laughs> for a moment it did kind of came and come into my mind i was like maybe he's planning to like you know steal the mona lisa or something but then i was like maybe not that's i, I feel like that's a lot like you know very much it will be very much complicated and a big one of the biggest cases but then he's like yeah let's let's grab the mona lisa Ah, oh, <laughs> this will be interesting. Let's see what happens. Oh, and I do wonder who's that guy? The guy with the huge, um, like you know what? I, like I said, it wouldn't actually surprise me if that ends up being Leonardo da Vinci or something. <laughs> you know, because this is like you know this is uh, Paris, and like you know they're going to the museums. Lupin is planning to like you know steal like a painting. That with that is Mona Lisa, so yeah, I don't know, like you know, I don't know why, but he 
that guy kind of gives me the impression of Leonardo da Vinci, kind of, you know, the big beard and all, I don't know, anyways, let's see. Mm, all right. <clears throat> don't move the Mona Lisa. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. This is be one of the biggest. Oh my God. This is one of be one of the biggest. <clears throat> biggest crimes if. Obviously, this is the Mona Lisa we're talking about, so. Okay, let's see if you are uh, you're in disguise or something. Let me pull your cheek. <laughs> Feel it. Maybe a Ruban in disguise. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that'll be a chance for Rupan to grab it. Exactly. Yes. Told the moon. Oh. Okay. Ah. Oh. For some. Oh! Ah, uh, it might be you or you. Yep. Okay. <laughs> He's like, wait, are you Rupan? <laughs> What the? Oh my god. Yo. <laughs> no! Oh my god, he really is? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how did he realize this guy is too good? No, yeah, he told you not to do that. My god, <laughs> just waiting underneath. Okay, I feel like that's not Rupan. You know what? I think that's not Rupan, that's probably someone else. Maybe Jigen or something in Rupan's disguise. Because he's awfully quiet, Rupan, you know? Yep, that's, that's definitely not Rupan. That's Zenigata or Goemon in disguise. They're baiting them over here so that Rupan can do his thing. Damn. That's not Rupan. Oh my god. Jigan, there you go! I knew it! <laughs> Oldest trick in the book. Just bait him somewhere else. So that Rupan can do his thing. That's not Rupan, that's Jigan. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you fell for it, Zenigata, again.
God damn. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> How is he climbing that? <laughs> oh no. Yo, wait, it's over. Oh my god. Cut the ladder, yeah. Come on. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Alright, it's 12 o'clock. Oh, okay. Then... Wait, so... Okay. Next time I'm going to catch him. Yes. <laughs> yep. He all he wanted was to catch Rupan. He didn't. He doesn't care about the Mona Lisa. I feel like this is all part of the bigger plan. Yeah. I just want to catch Rupan. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. Hmm. Officially. Ah. Oh, okay, okay. Ah. <clears throat> oh, that's a fake one. Wow. Wait. Ah. Yeah, exactly. The ICP was there. You have to act like the fake was real. Okay. Okay. Oh, did, did Rupan grab it then? I think so. Yeah. So he got the real one. Oh my god. Wow. So he was successful. Yeah, he doesn't even know what's happening. Hmm. <laughs> what? Oh no. <laughs> this is a problem. Is it? I don't know.
Okay. What? Yo, these guys are together. No, wait. Oh, did Fujiko do something? Damn. Wait, did Fujiko actually do something? Oh my god. <laughs> what? So this is the real one. No, wait, what's happening? Or, or is the appraiser... Oh, I don't know. Oh, it is... F oh, God. Oh. Okay, okay, that's what happened. Wait. Oh my god. <laughs> Still laughing. What is happening here? Okay, then what is the real one? Did Fujiko grab it or something? Oh, that is also a fake. This is the real one. Okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. For the country? Okay. Mm. I'm pretty sure Fujiko actually plans in stealing it. Hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a Rupan. Whoa, what the? What? Fool. <laughs> okay. So this one is the real one. Okay, this is kind of confusing me now. This one is the real one that uh, Rupan has. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you're you're putting yeah you're you're stepping on it <laughs> oh my god
Oh no. <laughs> yeah, what's happening? Is that the real one then? No, I feel like Fujiko did something. Did Fujiko do something? Oh my god, she did something. Wait, what? What? Wait, what? Really? I'll do it, Mona Souls. Wait, so she found it just completely coincidental? Oh no! That guy is Leonardo da Vinci, I think. The guy who was painting. Yo Wow But you never Yeah you One euro Oh my god, I think I was correct. Is this guy Leonardo da Vinci? Oh my god, he is... Ah! I was correct. I was joking when I said that he's Leonardo da Vinci because I saw the Mona Lisa beside him. He was painting. I was like, ah, that's Leonardo da Vinci. And he really is Leonardo da Vinci. I don't know why, but that beard and that long hair, I, it, it reminded me of da Vinci. And I'm like, ah, maybe that's da Vinci, you know. I think that is Vinci, isn't it? God, what? <laughs> like he said, it, why is my sketch? Obviously, that's... Okay. Wow. Well, I guess my guess became correct. <laughs> Wait, so... Ah, I understand now. Maybe the dream of Italy was... You know, putting one's consciousness in in someone el else's dream. Maybe they did something like that and maybe they did some experimentation and was able to make it so that they can completely so that they can completely override someone's personality with someone else's personality. That wouldn't surprise me, you know, because Obviously, Da Vinci cannot be brought back to life. How can it? How is that even possible? So what they can easily do is maybe keep 
like you know da vinci's i don't know like personality take person his personality and put it in someone else using the dream of italy and you know the way the guy um the, the scientist guy did it just just like that maybe did some further experimentation and was able to do this <clears throat> and they decided to bring the leonardo, leonardo da vinci back just like that I'm sure I'll get my answers, but maybe it's something like that. Oh my god, this, this is interesting. Like, okay, like, wow. I was not expecting Da Vinci to come up suddenly. <laughs> like, okay, it's like, you know, there was multiple reasons why I suspected that to be Da Vinci. Number one is, like, you know, the awful, uh, like, you know, much amount of, uh, like, you know, appearance of the mona lisa the mona lisa is in the in the beginning shot you know when they were like you know the, the first shot where dupan talks about uh, painting and uh, uh, thieves how they are similar the mona lisa is there uh, we see a lot of da vinci's portraits behind you know mona lisa over there uh, that portrait i forgot i always forget the portrait's name uh, the one where there's like uh, like the human anatomy what's what's that called uh, let, let me check da vinci human anatomy name what, what's the name of that um here it is the v vitruvian man uh, here we go yeah the vitruvian man the proportions of human body according to vitruvius this is a drawing made by italian polymath Leonardo da vinci there you go so yeah the vitruvian man and uh, a few other things as well like you know paintings and all that's the first thing that comes up you know number one number two we begin this episode with the Mona Lisa and then we suddenly see that guy who looks awful like Leonardo da Vinci you know with the beard and the long uh, hair you know just there sitting and painting and beside him there's a Mona Lisa portrait Fujiko was like you know kind of passing by him all these I was like ah that's Leonardo da Vinci I was I was just joking at that point because everything kind of pointed like that and then by the end of the episode i'm like yeah that's leonardo da vinci obviously i was not expecting him to actually be leonardo <laughs> wow okay all right i kind of like the way this is going you know like i i always like these type of situations i don't know why you know whenever there's like uh some kind of real person you know like that's why i love the fate franchise so much the like you know the fate franchise where uh real historical things are brought into life in an anime or in some way i love those type of scenarios that's why this is completely up my alley the way this is going you know like the da vinci is back and all that like you know actual like an actual person who existed he's back in like you know in, in this show i think that's him that's definitely you know da vinci so i love these type of developments that's why you know i don't know why but like, these type of situations and like you know progression i love it so yeah this is completely up my alley i i'm really liking the way this is going and yeah let's see what happens all right so we begin this episode with obviously fujiko buying the portrait which was not shown at the beginning you know we just see her like you know kind of going past and we then see uh, a few other like you know that that guy the guy who was trying to uh you know, kind of bring mona lisa like he to himself I forgot the guy's name who Rupan actually sold it by the end of it. He's like, I am still unhappy with the price. I can't pay any amount of money. So like five million is that million? No, or billion. Hundred thousand. It's billion, isn't it? Yeah, five billion. Five billion dollars. No, not dollars. Uh Euro, I think. Yeah. So that's the amount of money he was like going to provide them, but these okay. The answer is, answer is no, it's not available for loan. There you go. That was the whole problem here. He wanted that and he wasn't able to get it for loan. So that's why um, Fujiko hatched this plan with Philip because he knew Rupan was going to steal the Mona Lisa and give it to um, that guy who was trying to loan it. So to trick Rupan and get more money and like, you know, get the mansion from Philip, he, she decided to, like, you know, cooperate with him so Rupan was in in the team of that guy you know while philip was in the uh, uh, fujiko was in the team of philip that's how this whole thing went 
and that's how Fujiko was able to trick the whole uh, like you know Rupan and everyone at a certain extent for a moment so obviously at that moment we thought Fujiko was working with us but this is Fujiko we are talking about she always somehow <laughs> finds a way to betray us so there you go um Rupan and everyone was like okay we're going to like you know get uh, like the Mona Lisa and uh, yeah Zenigata is there everyone's ready you know like uh, the Mona Lisa is there and uh, Rupan is going to get it and I love how like and this is really good I've seen like you know like in Lupan season one two and three uh, m most of the time like you know Zenigata is kind of portrayed as like a goofy type of a police officer who just uh, is like a comic like you know like comedic type of character most of the times you know I love how in uh, in in part four she he has that comical like you know the comedy thing and like you know the, the, the uh, like you know the goofiness and everything that is there w within him but he's a lot more serious and capable which which is really interesting to see like you know the, like the way he has changed here and even in the new, in, like the newest movies you know the uh, Goemon's blood, blood spray Jigen's grave all those you know sh movies he's he's very serious and uh, he has a uh, like you know the funny thing to him as well but he is also serious and very much capable here we again see how he's completely able to just predict what Rupan is going to do at a certain extent he's completely not able to predict it he was able to predict that Rupan is probably uh, just there in uh, one of the statues you know he just goes there and he's the kind of brings like you know like the sh shoots the statue and Rupan comes out but as soon as that happens for a moment you know uh, I, I also thought that it was Rupan but then I realized like, he must be doing something else here so that's not Rupan that was actually Jigen in disguise in Rupan's disguise so that was like a there was like layers to it like you know Jigen disguised as Rupan was waiting inside of a statue to bait Zenigata and that's why I said Zenigata able to predict his moves to a certain extent he wasn't able to predict that that was Jigen you know which I was able to <laughs> but it took me a while as well <laughs> but anyways uh like I, what actually made me feel that it was quite odd because rupan was awfully quiet you know like we were seeing him him just uh, getting in front like you know, in uh, fujiko's bike and then just going if it was rupan he would probably just laughed and like made a few jokes within that span of a few minutes but he was just quiet off completely was not speaking so i was like okay something's definitely wrong here then i was like okay maybe that's jigen in rupan's disguise they're doing this to lure them out of the uh, like you know the museum so that rupan can do his thing so yeah there you go like uh, fujiko and jigen fooled them completely and when uh, zenigata comes and you know like <laughs> oh no zenigata was able to realize that was rupan when he saw him shoot you know you know the, the the quick the like you know the quick um draw that he does he was able to see that and zenigata realized that's not rupan and he's like you go guys go catch rupan i'm going to go back and uh, he knew what was going on he, he just went towards the museum and obviously the police officers got the fake rupan and yeah found out that was zenigata and it was easy for zenigata to just knock these three uh, police officer out and there you go rupan is there with his own plan and Zenigata tries to catch him uh, it's like there's like the hot air balloon and everything and you know Goemon is there Goemon helps Rupan out and they are able to get out of there good thing is that the Mona Lisa is not stolen it has not been swapped and all that stuff everyone's making you know like Zenigata as like a hero but Zenigata is not content you know Zenigata's like something is wrong I feel like I'm playing on the palm of his hand you know he's just thinking okay so there's multiple things we need to actually process here first of all what happened here um, according to the whole thing uh, what Rupa knew at this point is Philip has been loaning Mona Lisa you know to be different people for a lot of money and he is putting the fake Mona Lisa in the um, in the, in, the, in the thing in the, in the in the museum like you know the place so <clears throat> he thought that okay that was like you know he knew that what was happening he knew that the one which is on display is a fake mona lisa so rupan went and tasted 
Philip, when Philip was going to go and look at the actual real Mona Lisa, he got the real Mona Lisa, came out, decided to sell this to this guy. Okay, what's actually happening was a little bit different. Philip knew this was going to happen. Fujiko actually said everything to her, him. So basically, the, the, the Mona Lisa in display is a fake Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa that Philip went and looked at was also a fake Mona Lisa which Fujiko brought from that guy okay he knew that Rupan is going to get it so that was all part of the plan he got taste deliberately fell down and that was also like you know um, uh, like you know the, the, the actual Mona Lisa was somewhere else so basically the one in display is the fake Mona Lisa, the official fake Mona Lisa. The one that Philip went to see was the picture that that guy painted while the actual Mona Lisa was somewhere else. Rupan grabbed the painting Mona Lisa that uh, Fujiko brought, bought for a few uh, like, you know, coins. He got it and he thought that was the actual Mona Lisa. What is, you know, what is weird from this like, episode, we could actually realize that Rupan kind of is able to figure out which is fake and which is not fake. So basically, he here said that, oh, this is the actual Mona Lisa, you know, and this guy was like, okay, like, you know, for now, I'm going to bring a person who's going to process it and see if it's fake or uh, like, you know, uh, the real one. And he brings this guy. He's like, oh, this is fake. Rupan's like, that's impossible. I think this is the real one. So Rupan was correct all along. If this is actually painted by the actual Leonardo da Vinci, then this is a real Mona Lisa, you know? So Rupan was never wrong. That, that's what we can realize from like, you know, like he was able to figure out which was the correct one. So, okay. Now, <clears throat> obviously, um, Rupan is like, okay, like there's something going on here. I need to go back and see what's happening. And uh, okay, and he realizes what Fujiko did, like, you know, the whole plan that Philip obviously like you know like wasn't able to take out the fake Mona Lisa from the like the thing so he kept the fake Mona Lisa in display and made the whole play to trick Rupan to get the painting that Fujiko bought the actual Mona Lisa is somewhere else so Rupan and Zenigata has like a little bet I think here oh uh, the, the, the appraiser he sees the Mona Lisa and he's like, whoa, what is this? And uh, obviously Zenigata is also kind of conflicted. He's like, something is happening here. My sixth sense is saying that there's something wrong with this. And uh, Rupan and uh, Zenigata. Okay, this part, just a sec. Okay, here he go gets to know that uh, Fuji got a mansion and uh, Zenigata says, you said you can't fool your two eyes, but I think you were blinded by money. <clears throat> so the real Mona Lisa question mark? Yeah, she's still laughing at Philip's place. Okay, Ruban is like, nope, that's a fake. You can't fool these eyes. You're stubborn as a mule. Then let's go check it out. Uh, and if you think these eyes are wrong, then let's bet on it, Jigen. Okay, so... Like I said, Rupan was correct at a certain extent, I guess, because Leonardo da Vinci did make that Mona Lisa. That's why he was so adamant in saying that, oh, this one's the real one. Okay, anyways, uh, I think that's what's happening. I'm, I need to properly figure this portion out. Okay, so we then get to see Fujiko and Philip talking about the whole thing and her, him just saying, oh, this is a real one and we're going to you know, loan it to someone else for a huge amount of money, this and that gives Fujiko an extra like, you know, amount. And uh, okay, so <laughs> this guy from Dubai, who is obviously Rupan in disguise, that he's going to loan it to is here and give the payment they show the Mona Lisa and there you go okay so here 
Rupan is like, wait a minute, this is the real Mona Lisa. And Jingen is half laughing, haha, <laughs> because obviously there's two real Mona Lisas here. The one that's been drawn by Da Vinci a long time ago, then the one which has been drawn a few days ago. So the one that Rupan got is the one that has been drawn by him a few days ago. That's why he was like, okay, this is the correct one, because it's also drawn by the Leonardo Da Vinci. Another thing, this one is also the true one. Like in Rupan's mind, there's only one real Mona Lisa, but he's like, wait a minute. So this is also real, that is also real, what's happening? And obviously he's definitely like, you know, confused here uh, because he doesn't know there's two Mona Lisas now. All right, so one thing that's really kind of confusing me, how can Rupan appraise this so quickly and correctly? Even the official appraiser wasn't able to appraise it that quickly. Like, you know, he, he had to actually see it for a few moments and then he realized that's another version of Mona Lisa. Okay, anyways, they, they trick them here, uh, this uh, Philip, and get away with the Mona Lisa. And the whole chase happens and, uh, you know, uh, Rupan then, like, you know, goes away, calls, phone calls that guy and starts laughing. Obviously, that guy said something like, oh, this is an actual Mona Lisa as well. So, yeah, you, you get the mansion or, like, you know, or you get the money, something like that, he said, I'm guessing. And... Uh, Okay, now Zenigatha comes here and again, like, and he kind of tries to get him, but <laughs> Rupan's run away, runs away. And the real Mona Lisa, he actually gives it back to Zenigatha. He's like, ah, take care of that. That's the real one. <laughs> oh my god. The real, real one. The one which has been uh, painted by the Leonardo da Vinci so many years ago. The, another, the, the newest real one, Rupan already get, got the money for it from that guy. So he, he doesn't need the real one now. This, this episode is a little, little bit kind of confusing if you kind of think about it, like with the real and the fake ones. I, I understand it now by the end of it, what's happening. And obviously Lupin is like, I won the bet. They go to the mansion and Fujiko's like, why are you here? And Lupin is like, oh, this is my house. And then Fuji, uh, Lupin says, where did you get the Mona Lisa from? And Fujiko's like, I, got, I just brought it from the street, you know, like from like you know, a painter. And here you go, here's where this thing, thing, thing I also was unaware of. So there's two Mona Lisas, I'm guessing. One that has been drawn by Leonardo da Vinci when he was younger. And another one, okay, let's read this part. You know the example of the Islesworth Mona Lisa, right? Okay. You mean that one was painted by da Vinci too? Yeah, without question. The old man was saying something about how it's the greatest discovery since the Isle something or other. What is that anyway? Here you go. There were originally two Mona Lisas painted by Da Vinci. Okay. Um, the Isle of Mona Lisa was painted when she was younger. When Mona Lisa was younger. Okay. Oh. But it's completely different. It's still a major discovery. Obviously, you get the money for it because it's the real one. <laughs> and yeah, later on, Rupan just... <laughs> I love how Rupan just gives back the amount of money that <laughs> Fuju actually paid for it. And he's like, here you go, here's your money. This mansion is mine. <laughs> and Fuji goes like, no, like, you know, at least give me half of it. <laughs> and okay. So let me check. Isleworth Mona Lisa. Is this actually a real thing? Isleworth Mona Lisa uh, is an early 16th century oil on canvas painting depicting the same subject as Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. Uh, okay, there you go. Depicted as being a younger age. Okay. Uh, though with the subject, Lisa del Giocondo. Oh, is. Oh, that was the actual person, the model, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, Li Lisa del Giocondo was an Italian noblewoman and a member of the Gerardini family of Florence and Tuscany. Her name was given to the Mona Lisa, a portrait commissioned by her husband and painted by Leonardo da Vinci during the Italian Renaissance. Given to the Mona Lisa. Wait, I was under the impression that the Mona Lisa is just a... Uh, um, female version of Leonardo da Vinci like what's what's with that then like I was like I, I knew that like I thought that Leonardo da Vinci like you know drew Mona Lisa as how he depicted himself as a female 
You know the whole thing with I think the golden ratio or something. What is that? The golden ratio or something that's like Yeah, uh the golden ratio. All that stuff, like you know, like Mirana Nietzsche made a picture of himself as like a female or something like that. So what's with that then? Is that like a rumor or something? So the actual person existed. Like you know, Lisa del Lisa del Gioconto. Italian noble woman and uh, okay so anyways that's a different topic I'll watch Mona Lisa so there you go uh, it's depicted as Lo Mona Lisa at a younger age okay I can see the picture now and yeah she looks a lot younger here it's the same picture but she's a lot younger here um, the painting is thought to have been brought from Italy to England in the 1780 came into public view in 1913 when English connoisseur Hugh Blanker acquired it from a major house in Somerset where it was said though to have been hanging over a century. Since 1910s, experts in various fields as well as collectors who have acquired ownership of the painting have asserted that the major elements of the painting are the work of Leonardo himself as an earlier version of Mona Lisa. There you go. Okay. Alright. So yeah, it actually like, you know, like, it is an actual thing then. I was not aware of that. Okay, so there you go. Like, you know. And at this moment, it started dawning on me. I'm like, oh my god, is that really Leonardo da Vinci then? You know? And uh, I, I just made a casual joke about the situation because I thought like everyone's just like, you know, everything is just like, you know, that guy looks like Leonardo da Vinci and <laughs> he's painting a picture and there's like a Lona, Mona Lisa beside him. That's why I'm like, haha, Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> and there you go that's actually true that means now that is Leonardo da Vinci all right so here we see and at this point it's pretty obvious now like you know he's like in his place with um like you know the um, vitron man I think that was yeah uh Vitruvian sorry not Vitruvian sorry Vitruvian yeah uh, the Vitruvian man and a few other portraits as well and uh, he's just there and it's it's pretty obvious here you know like from this point onwards that that's leonardo da vinci and we get the little flashback of mona lisa uh he her painting it and uh he was like oh i can give it to you but this one's this one's better than the one in the museum i'll give it to you for one okay and fujiko gives him a lot of pennies uh, a lot of coins and she's like then you should have more confidence you could make a lot of money if you sold yourself differently the irony <laughs> oh god now and then obviously it's very obvious now when he looks at the like you know the back side of the coin and there's the vitruvian man and he's like why is my sketch on a coin <laughs> he must be so confused he's like what is happening here <laughs> Oh my god, I wonder where this is going to go now. Wow, that was really interesting, these two episodes. God, like, these were one of the best episodes of this season, I think. So yeah, um, that's it, guys. Uh, fantastic episode, I loved it. So, and like I said, I, I'm, I'm usually sold into these type of situations where there's like, you know, any type of actual person in real history who's brought in back in anime. I love that. That's why I love the Fate franchise, the Fate, you know, like the Type Moon franchise because it does that so yeah this is completely up my alley i'm going to love this i think uh, even more so let us see what happens anyways that's it thanks for watching this is my reaction to uh lupin the third part four episode number um 13 and 14 so if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll check them out so that's it guys thanks for watching i'll see you guys next week with another two more episodes of lupin the third and until then goodbye and have a nice day